Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuvir. In this class, we will discuss about properties of lattice. In our previous classes, we clearly discussed about what is meant by lattice. Please watch that class and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class. So, before we go into the properties, just for half minute, let me discuss the what is meant by lattice with this example. The same example we have used in our previous classes for so that you can easily understand the properties. So, this is the symbol we use to mention least upper bound. This is the symbol we use for greatest lower bound. So, if you write like this means it is you are going to find the least upper bound and greatest lower bound. So, this is a lattice. When we are going to say it as a lattice, you take any pair of elements. Let us take 2, 3. For any pair of elements, you should have a least upper bound and greatest lower bound. 2, 3 for this pair of elements. What is the least upper bound? 6 is the least upper bound. What is the greatest lower bound? 1 is the greatest lower bound. If this happens for any pair of elements, then this we call it as a lattice. Now coming to the properties. So the first one is idempotent law. So A, least upper bound with A equal to A. Yes, it is a lattice. Before lattice, we are going to check for a poset. Poset means it is following the reflexive property. Means A relates with A. You are going to find the least upper bound for a same elements, which is the same. Similarly, A, greatest lower bound of A is equal to A. So, idempotent law says that both are A, greatest lower bound A is equal to the same element. Similarly, the next one, commutative law. A, least upper bound equal to B, least upper bound A. Both are same. If you find a least upper bound for 2, 3 or 3, 2, whatever the pair is, you are going to get the same element. It is not going to change. So, similarly, A, greatest lower bound of B equal to B, greatest lower bound of A. Both are same. Now, coming to the third one, this is very important. This is a bit confusing to understand. Associative law. What this law says that then we, are go, we will go with the, what, how, how we are going with the proof of the statement. A, least upper bound with B, least upper bound C equal to A, least upper bound B, whatever the value you got here, that value, least upper bound with C, both are same. Means if you write the brackets anywhere, A least upper bound B or B least upper bound C, anywhere if you write, you are going to get the same value. Let us try to understand this. We are going to understand the proof for this. Before going into the proof, we will we'll say two statements. If you understand those two statements, it is very, very easy to understand the proof. So, what does that mean is, 2 comma 3, what is the least upper bound? 6. So, from this you need to understand what is the least upper bound of 2 comma 3 is 6. What is the meaning of that? Means the elements 2 comma 3 is going to relate with 6. 2 is having a relation with 6. 3 is having a relation with 6. So, whatever the elements you considered, those elements are going to relate with the least upper bound. This point we understood from our previous classes. Similarly, 2 comma 3, what is the greatest lower bound? 1 is the greatest lower bound for 2 comma 3. From this point, you need to understand whatever the greatest lower bound value is, that value is going to relate with 2, that value is going to relate with 3. That is what the greatest lower bound is. Definitely, it is going to relate with the elements 2 comma 3. So, if you understand these two points, uh, proof is very, very easy. Now, we are going to derive for the first one. The second one, you, you can do it on your own. So, LHS is equal to RHS. We are taking X is equal to LHS, Y is equal to RHS. So, now take the LHS, A, least upper bound of B, least upper bound C. So, this can be written as least upper bound of A comma B C. Assume that the least upper bound value is Z, some element Z. 
So from this we can write that A is going to relate with Z. Here we have written it as less than or equal to. Means relational operator symbol. If your relational operator symbol is a subset. A subset of Z. So you can write it as A relation with Z. And B or C. B it's, it's not R. B uh, least upper bound C relation with Z. That is what the meaning of this least upper bound. In the above points we mentioned that. So the, the elements are going to definitely relate with the least upper bound. So here what's the two elements? This and this are the two elements. So whatever the value you got here, that is the value. B least upper bound C means. It is going to definitely relate with Z. So from this, you again you take this least upper bound of B comma C. So from this you can write it as B definitely going to relate with least upper bound of B comma C. And C definitely it is going to relate with B least upper bound of B or C, B comma C. So from these two statements, this, this and this we can write it as so from this statement we can write it as B least upper bound C is going to relate with Z. So B relation with Z and C relation with Z. So from the above three statements this, this, this and this two we can write it as A relates Z and B relation with Z and C relation with Z. This can be written as A relates Z and B relates Z bracket and C relates Z. This can be written as A least upper bound B relates Z and C least upper uh, relates Z. This can be written as A least upper bound B least upper bound C relates Z. What is this? This means Y. So both are same. Y relates Z. <coughs> Similarly, you take the RHS and show it as LHS. This can be applied for the next one also. Next, uh, next, next, uh, what? Greatest lower bound also. A greatest lower bound, B greatest lower bound, C. So whatever the greatest lower bound value you got here, if it is A greatest lower bound, that value equal to same. So this is what associative law says. Uh, now coming to the next one, absorption law. So this is also easy to understand. A least upper bound with A greatest lower bound with B equal to A. Similarly, A greatest lower bound with A least upper bound B is going to get you as A. So the same way, the, this is also we can derive using the above example, whatever the way you have showed in the associative law, we will do the same thing. So now take the first one, we are going to show for the first one, A least upper bound with A greatest lower bound B equal to A, take this. So from this we are taking this, A greatest lower bound B, this can be written as greatest lower bound of A comma B. <coughs> In the above, we, we discussed that uh, greatest lower bound of A comma B, it is going to relate with both A and B. So A, greatest lower bound B, whatever the value you got here, that is going to form a relation with A and, and it is also going to form a relation with B. So, and also from the basics, it is a poset, A relates A. So from this two, from this two, you can write it as A forms a relation with A and A greatest lower bound B is going to form a relation with A. <laughs> this can be written as A least upper bound, A greatest lower bound is going to relate with A. So it is going to get A. Similarly, we can derive the second one also. Hope you understand these properties. If you have any questions regarding the concept, please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.